Hi folks, here on episode two, you maybe watched the first episode of my blind old school RuneScape playthrough. In that episode, I streamed my first eight hours of the game live, and I uploaded that raw real-time video to YouTube. And I think that since I was interacting with chat the whole time and trying out all sorts of different things, it was a little bit more interesting to watch real-time than if I just recorded the game and uploaded it. Going forward, though, because of the way it's designed, I can't really fit more live streaming of the game into my schedule, but I still want to play it and share that blind experience with the community, so I had to think about how I'm going to do that. Um, I've landed on this plan, so I'm going to record every hour I play of Old School RuneScape. I'll generally keep my mic muted whenever I'm doing something repetitive, like grinding, or otherwise don't have any commentary to add to the gameplay. Whenever I play the game for about eight hours, I'll take those eight hours of videos, stitch them together, and go through the timeline to fast forward through all the segments where I'm not talking. The fast forward rate's gonna be about a factor of 16. When I am talking, the gameplay will resume to normal speed so you can hear my thoughts on what's happening. And my plan is to talk more whenever I'm doing new content for the first time, uh, whenever something interesting is happening. So if you just watch the video, it should automatically slow down when those interesting things happen outside of the grind, like random events, rare drops, exploring new parts of the map, and so on. I'll be running a live split timer uh, so you can see the real time that's passing even during fast forwarding. I didn't actually have that set up when I first started recording uh, RuneScape offline, but it should be on every video going forward and later in this one. I'm going to be categorizing each video based on my goal for that specific eight hour block. Uh, for example, my goal in this video is agility training. That doesn't mean I do nothing but agility in this video. In fact, I hit a couple of roadblocks that required me to do quests and get some other skills in order to continue doing agility, but I'm going to let those roadblocks be a surprise. Uh, since 90% of these videos are going to be fast forwarding through repetitive grinding, I'm not going to be turning on the webcam for these. I might do a little intro at the beginning of each section to explain what it was I'm doing like this one. But once the gameplay begins, the webcam and the overlay is going to go away. It'll be full screened. Um, I'm going to be keeping the OS Buddy panel open on the right side so you can see the XP rates and kills that I'm tracking, especially during fast forwarding. I think that's valuable. And for this series playthrough, I'm sticking to the following basic restrictions for myself. They're both fairly loose. So the first one is I'm going to be trying to stay reasonably blind. Um, I learned quite a bit later in this video that some of the quests in Old School RuneScape are basically unplayable blind. You're practically expected to use the wiki and some walkthroughs. I actually think that that's super cool because it allows for some crazy quest design. Um, but it is going to require me to occasionally research some stuff. I, I cannot play this completely blind. I don't think it's possible. Um, however, I'm going to be waiting to research wiki, wiki entries and walkthroughs until I hit roadblocks. I'm going to be continuing to be careful not to read too much about the game when I'm not actively playing it, so I'm not going to do things like, oh, I want to train agility. What's the most efficient way to train agility? I'm just going to try to figure that out as I go. Um, keep in mind, though, that while I think this is cool and I think it's going to be a fun way for me to play it, it might be infuriating to watch. Um, since I'm not reading ahead on quest walkthroughs, you're going to see me do at least one quest where I unnecessarily have to make about three times as many back and forth trips between one area and another because I wasn't prepared and I didn't know what I was supposed to bring. Um, fortunately though, like I mentioned earlier, those infuriating bits should be mostly fast forwarded. So even though you're going to be like, oh my God, you're supposed to bring this item. Why didn't you bring the item? It's okay. It'll be over quickly. Second limitation is that I'd like to reasonably limit my interaction with the grand exchange. I'm not so anti-trading that uh, I want to go like re-roll as an Iron Man character. I think that having a little bit of Grand Exchange is okay. I'm more concerned here with what I buy from the Grand Exchange than what I sell. I know selling it is basically almost just like a vendor, so I'm not too worried about it generating money for me. Um, I'm not going to be very consistent about which purchases I think are okay. My general policy or thought is that if it's reasonable for me to unlock, gather, or craft something myself, I should probably try to do that rather than just buy it from the GE. Um, and I especially would like to avoid using the GE to buy items just for skilling up, so I don't want to go on there and just buy a huge stack of bones. Uh, that might change as I play and I see the higher tiers of some of the more challenging skills to level up, but at least for now, I want to try to limit myself from going and buying a bunch of skill up items. If I can gather them myself, I'd like to try to. Basically, the rule is going to be, if you see me go to buy something from the Grand Exchange, you should probably expect me to rationalize why I'm buying it rather than gathering it on my own. Um, I hope this is enjoyable to watch. The video is going to start with my first major goal for the game, which is training agility. Enjoy. Hey, so we're picking up the day after the first playthrough stream, and uh, I would like to level up agility. So I'm going to go to a 
desert town and finish the agility course to 30. It's going to be a blast. Uh, still don't quite know how this is going to work out. I don't think I can just have the mic running the whole time. I also don't think I'm going to upload the entirety of me grinding because that would be miserable. Um, so I'm just going to mute myself and then I'll probably hit recording or hit record every so often once I transition into doing something slightly interesting. So anyway. Hey, I've got an agility buddy. What's up, friend? Gotta learn which buttons to hit. Just fell off the tightrope and went to go hit talk. <laughs> it's okay, we'll get a we'll get a habit of this. I so just hit 22 agility, working on 23. Try to pause when the level up pops up next time. Very good. Twenty-three agility, and on to twenty-four. Here's metal. Twenty-four agility. Mark of Grace. Hey, 25 agility. All right, so I looked at the agility guide and it says that there's an activity called uh, Werewolf Skull Ball at 25. But I looked into that and I think I need to have like 105 combat and have done a quest to be able to do it. So rather than go do that now, we're just gonna keep doing this agility course up to 30. Mark of Grace. Here comes 26 agility. There it is. Look at that. comes 27 agility. There it is. So we got another mark of grace over here. Comes another friendly mark of grace. There's twenty eight. Comes our buddy, the mark of grace.
I've never seen this before. Rick Turpentine. Good day, madam. Oh, maybe I didn't interact with him fast enough. Huh. Well, maybe that was a random event or something? I don't know. Whoops, I got distracted by the event there. Agility 29. I'm not sure, but I think this dude here is waving to me every time I complete a lap. It's a player, right? Okay, no, he did last time. Maybe I'll uh, clip to it, we'll see. There it was. Nice. I'm sure he just does that for people doing agility courses. It's kind of funny. Let's see, is he going to wave at me? He waved at the other guy. He probably can't have that set up automatically. Do you think he's actually sitting there and just like cheering on people doing agility courses? Actually, I didn't know waving was a thing. Let me see if I can do it. It's as I pass him. Oh, he's he's got to be. He's got to have something that's set up to do that automatically. That's super funny. So on this last lap, I figured out how to do an emote in response. I'll try to wave back to him here if it works. Oh shoot. Huh, I got 80 gold somehow. Maybe it was that random event that I didn't finish. No idea where that came from, but I'll take it. Oh man, I'm looking forward to this every time now. I get a wave from Big Red Japan as soon as I pass him. <gasps> no! I need your... Okay, it's as I click the thing. <laughs> Coming up on another mark of grace here. Whoa, fell off the teeth zipline for the first time. I actually don't know. So I can find my way back after all that. That's a bummer, then I won't get the guy to wave at me this lap. Sadness. Damn, it rains, it falls. Fell off the tightrope. Hmm. Oh man, are we gonna get another wave? Yeah! God. <laughs> I don't know why I look forward to that so much. This game is messing with me. Oh, that's satisfying. Awesome. All right, so we're at 30 agility. Um, let me figure out how much time that took. I think 21 to 28 took, let's see. Details. It was a little over an hour. Okay, so that's not unreasonable. Uh, next challenge is gonna be doing the 30 agility course, which I wanna say is in Varrock, which I've already been to. Uh, as I've been doing this, I've kind of been thinking about how I'm going to go about recording this going forward. And I think we're just going to do this where I imagine we'll fast forward during the grinding loop. And I'll try to talk over the video occasionally and then I'll slow down the video for me to talk and then get back to fast forwarding it. Uh, whenever I go to do a new thing, I will not fast forward. I'll just turn on the microphone and talk through it. But whenever we're grinding, I'll shut up and I'll just set it on a speedy loop. Looks like there's a token, Mark of Grace. Let me grab that real quick before it despawns. I didn't even notice it there. And then we'll take a short break so I can plan what exactly I'm going to do to set up uh, the Varrock grind. I may have missed it, we'll see. Oh, it's still there. Okay. That's nice of them. Puts me at 11 marks of grace for 
for like nine levels of agility. And may as well jump down. Thanks for the wave, buddy. Okay, I guess I'll cut it there, and maybe we'll restart once I come up with the next plan. Okay, we're at 30 agility, so it's time to go to Verok. Uh, probably fast forward my trip there. I should have teleported home last session. Oh well. I guess I've got some money to go back through the gate, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and teleport. Uh, I'll just fast forward the journey there since we've seen it before, and then I'll resume normal speed once we start the new course. For Oh man, time to do the shortcut. This is what it was all for. Yeah, value. All right, we're here. Uh, I'm just gonna do one loop with the mic on. I'm gonna see what this course is like. Let's go do the double climb there. Cross a clothesline. That's pretty similar to what we were doing before. So I'll turn on run for this. I gotta regenerate my stamina though. That's cool. Little jumps and the squeak. Leap the gap. Got that parkour. Got that parkour. Nice. Balance on the wall. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I love the way they escalate these. Oh no, I fell. Alright, well, I'll fast forward up back to that point. God damn it. All right, here we go. We make it this time. Oh no! Third time's a charm? We've already fallen three times on the course, so. Can do it. Nice. Yeah, I wonder if you generally fail more often the further you get into agility courses. It's kind of interesting. Oh shit, I don't know where the next step is. Gotta be dropping down somewhere, right? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there's little signs. Okay. Pay attention for those next time. I'm gonna jump onto this balcony, I guess. Whoa! Nice. Got that parkour. That's not that. Keep following the signs. It's likely to get lost. I'm curious how much XP a lap gives, right? This might be the looping point. Sweet. Okay, and now for the grind. Well, I got a little bit lost there, but I think I know where it is now. I need, probably need to do one more loop to figure out where it is in relation to everything else, but we'll see. Hey, it's a mark of grace. Oh wow, it was really stupid. It was It's like within, you can see it from the end of the course. All right, I understand now. Actually, before I fast forward, I think I misread this as a squeak. It's a squawk. You're like jumping over a pigeon, right? Nice. Is that my buddy that was waving at me before? Big Red Japan. Oh. Designer of the 2013 player design content rooftop agility courses. That's why he's there and waves at you. I thought he was an actual player. Well, I'm a goof. <laughs> Figured, like, from his name last time, it had to be a character and not an NPC, right? This guy I'm lapping with is dressed like the Joker. Didn't really think about this game having too much in the way of character customization. I guess all the screenshots of it have the default bald bot character, so it's kind of cool. Hey, Mark of Grace. Thirty-one. Got to get better at predicting when that's going to happen. I mean, I, I get the information from uh, OS Buddy. I'll work on it. Oh, 
Shoot, I think I skipped a random event. Oh well, I'll see if I can get back to it. I gotta listen to- oh wait, maybe I'm okay. I will. Hello there, Lassie. Just took up an old treasure chest of mine. Old hands of mine aren't as useful as they used to be, and the lock in that chest is a little bit too fiddly for old Captain Arnoff. Can you help me out? Yeah, so I'll help you unlock your chest. There are three columns. What you need to do for me is match up each picture with the word underneath the column, and then unlock the chest. Oh, this is the... The one that's supposed to be stopping, uh... Bots, I guess? It's pretty silly. Well done, Mitty. That's the right combination. Here, have a little something for helping me out. What'd they give me? Oh, gold bar. That's cool. I don't know. I guess they added those mostly as bot prevention, but they're kind of fun when you're doing agility courses or the like. Right on. I'm gonna get the timing right this time. Is this Agility 32? It's quite a bit slower now than it was from 20 to 30. I know it just gets worse over time, but I'm starting to understand. <laughs> we'll see. I really wanted to take Agility to 50 before I do anything else in the game. I might bail out on that, but uh, let's just keep going for now. This is fun. fall a lot on this one. I don't know if you just are more likely to fall the further you get into these, but it gets pretty tricky after a while. Oh god, I've been in 100 stamina. Didn't even realize it. Didn't realize the thing got shut off. Well, take advantage of it now. You're wondering why I'm slowing down over here constantly. I'm typing in Discord with, uh, Chaos Factor, trying to figure out the best way to manage or set up these grinding videos going forward. I like sent him the first one that we just did in the Desert City, uh, trying to figure out whether we want to just focus on one skill at a time or do the kind of ooh, piece of candy style of play that we did in the initial stream. Uh, it's a really interesting way to think about it. Like, this is the first game that I'm considering really altering the way I record it. Definitely don't do curated videos on YouTube in most cases. Normally what I do is I just load the VOD from stream. I, I clip it at the beginning and the end of the stream so you don't see the intro and the outro. But it's an enormous amount of work. Like that, if you watch that first segment where I was doing the desert puzzle from uh, 21 to 30, the, the video was about an hour long, the raw video. It took about an hour for me to edit it and then an hour for it to process. So I'm hoping that the first part the hour for it to edit, I'll get better at that, more efficient, and bring that time down. But the rendering part is always going to take the same amount of time. Can't do much about that. Anyway, uh, keep working on this for now. I'm going to try to figure out how best to edit this. And I also need to practice this particular agility course so I can tell which sections are best to pause and type in Discord without me slowing down my precious XP per hour. Back to the grind. God damn it. I'm going the wrong way. I wish I could freeze the mini-map to always face north. I get turned around so easily. There it is. <laughs> Currently talking to Chaos Factor. So we're talking about how, like, it's interesting to watch uh, somebody do the ooh, a piece of candy, constantly distracted style of play. Uh... So it might not be so great for me to have a one-hour YouTube video that's just agility, then a one-hour video that's just smithing and so on. Um, so I think I will eventually do a piece of candy videos, but I I need to do agility as high as I possibly can now, or I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to get optimization trauma if I do anything other than agility and see my stamina meter deplete. Like It seems like it makes everything else so much faster, so... I'm glad that we did the eight-hour stream of me wandering around and having fun. If people are interested in seeing that, hopefully they got hooked in the first video. Hopefully you got hooked in the first video. And then we're just going to do agility non-stop until I basically soft cap it. 
given that there's a wiki button in this game, I'm a little bit less hesitant to ask direct questions about how the game plays out later on, so I will be asking questions and researching stuff. I'll probably unmute the video to explain when I'm doing some research on Wikipedia or the like, or the, the RuneScape wiki. Anyway, I talked to uh, Chaos Factor and I'm like, you know, what, what's effectively soft capping agility? What's the best number that I should go for that's realistic? Obviously 99 is not realistic, but I'm sure there's a value that I can get to that's good enough, so to speak. Uh, he said like 70 to 76 is where to go for that. And that one of the last areas you have to go to is the PvP zone. And that's actually kind of a good idea to do agility early because you are safer in the PvP zone if you're very low level. You're less likely to get PK'd while you're doing stuff there. So that's good to hear. Uh, it's going to be miserable slash amazing, but I think I'm just going to do nothing but agility in this game until I get to that soft cap of like 70, 76. So I hope this is compelling. Son of a bitch, because we're going to get more of it. One of the things I'm talking to Chaos Factor about here is that I guess the RootScape community likes to see a timer showing the actual amount of time you're spending on something. Uh, if I segment this, which I probably will have to, it's currently 11.30 in the morning and I go live with my normal stream in about 90 minutes. Um, if I segment it in the next section, I'll add in the live split timer and add in the time we've already added. Whoops, I had to sneeze. Um, so I think what will happen is if I have the live split timer running while I'm recording, if I find some screen real estate to put it on, it will get fast forwarded as well during the quiet part, so that'll be useful. Back to the grind. A hey, 33 agility. Living the dream. 33 is the age Christ was when he died. That's relevant to you. You know, I might not be here. I thought I was going to be here from 30 to 40, but it looks like there's a barbarian course at 35. Uh, I don't know where that is. It'll probably be interesting first time content, not fast forwarded as I go find it and explore it. I don't know if I can survive it. <laughs> Part of the injuries of watching me not stream this, because I'm streaming and I can constantly be asking chat, hey, is it safe for me to go here? No, I'm just going to have to find out and maybe risk it all. So yeah, I think we'll take this grind to 35 and then we'll uh, call that our checkpoint and the next step will be to go from here to wherever that barbarian course is, assuming I'm able to start it. Currently experiencing the magic of multitasking while grinding in RuneScape. I'm, uh, today we're playing Prey 2017 on stream. The last time I played it was like December of last year. It was a while ago. Because uh, it, it was on somebody's sub block and then it just recently won the vote. So I have to watch through the VOD and make some notes for myself for today's stream. So I'm practicing, like, watching a few seconds of the video, typing a few sentences whenever I'm doing one of the longer agility jumps. This will probably be easier with some of the less active grinds in the future, like, um, Sounds like fishing is one that I could probably get a lot of multitasking in. Son of a bitch, why does it always, does the game know that I'm talking? Uh, I'll have to do a... God damn it. Here comes 34 agility. Feels so good. All right, one more on this course, and we're going to see if we can find this barbarian course probably next time I play. Thank you. 
Here it comes. 35? Aw, yeah. Value. Worth it. <laughs> All right, uh, next session we're going to try to find this barbarian course and see if I can do it and try to push to 40. Thanks for watching. I'll probably cut right to it. Howdy, folks. I've added the uh, live split timer there on the right. I'll go ahead and start it now. Got to 35 agility last time, so now we're going to try to go to this barbarian agility course, which I believe involves going to a completely new area not far from the tree gnome stronghold, which we got to during the live stream. So I assume that's going to involve me teleporting to Camelot and then making my way through the quite dangerous area with the um, little giant. So I'm going to go give that a shot. Might pop by the bank really quick and deposit some stuff. Uh, I'll probably stay muted until I get to somewhere new. See you soon. Grab this uh, glass blowing pipe that's worth a decent amount of GP. Maybe I'll use it for glass blowing later. Hey, it's free. Bye, Grandpa Jack. Right, I remember this place. This is the fishing guild that I can't get into until I'm a much higher fishing level. Do that at some point. I'm walking right now because I'm trying to conserve stamina for when I have to run past the hill giants. Oh, steel bar just lying around? Maybe that's not as exciting as I think it is. Oh, that's why it's not tenable. Okay. So, I think that's the way I have to go. But since my draw distance doesn't extend there, I'm just going to try to go north a bit. There's someone over there fighting them, which is interesting. There the map goes. It's really weird. I wonder why it wasn't triggering a second ago. Alright, time to run. I guess I don't have armor this time. That's tricky. Oh god. I might die my first time. We'll see. The difference between no armor and some armor is quite large. Hey, we survived. Okay. I guess I'm kind of implicitly assuming that I can make it to this barbarian place safely. Uh, there's nothing dangerous between the gnome city and the barbarians, but hey, that's the magic of not streaming it and being able to ask chat. So, I'll see what I can do. I think that there's a way out of the gnome stronghold. Maybe through that gate there. Assuming that's a gate that I can go through. I guess we'll find out here soon enough. Alright, stamina's tanked now. Try to leave it off, leave run off for now until I can get it quite a bit higher. Try to work my way out of here. Let's kind of get a sense of what sort of hills the protagonist is able to climb. I don't think they have much wiggle room to climb things, unfortunately. Pick flax. What does that cost me? Nothing, but it also doesn't skill me up at all. Okay. These cute creatures. Isn't it cute? It looks like a spider bunny. Working our way there slowly but surely. I don't think we want to go up this hill. There is another bank up there that I maybe justify depositing like my marks in. But I assume I keep them if I die? Maybe I'm wrong about that. <laughs> Should probably try to track down the uh, rogue's den at some point. It's likely a good idea. Nothing aggro so far, as far as I can tell. The gnomes all seem pretty friendly anyway. This game soundtrack is so goofy. I don't know if it's the right word to describe this game, but innocent keeps coming to mind. It's, it's cute. 
for lack of a better word. This is where there's a little red break in the fence. It's like right here, right? Hmm. Maybe I can't get here from over here. I just kind of assume that I could. If I walk all the way around the outside, but that looks like that gets blocked off there. How do you get over there? Huh. Someone familiar with RuneScape is watching this going, Oh my god, what are you doing, you fool? So I can't cross rivers at all, right? Alright, I think it's time for me to Google it. Uh, how to reach Barbarian Agility Course. How to get to the Barbarian Outposts. And Stronghold. Completion of the Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl Mini Quest. Looks like it's more XP per hour than the one I was doing recently. Okay, Alfred Grimhard's Bar Crawl. Check around various bars and pubs in RuneScape, drink a specialty drink, have them sign off on a Bar Crawl card. To Barbarian Outpost. Oh, I need to... Okay, so I can get to the Barbarian Outpost, but I need to do this quest to access the Agility Course. Interesting. Okay. Located in the northwest of Bextorian Falls, north of the Trinome Stronghold. Teleport using a game, so I'm going to walk from Sears Village. Use a shortcut to the northeast of the Grand Tree. It requires 37 agility. Oh. Oh. That's awful. Teleport using Barbarian's Teleport. Walk from Sears Village. Well, might be what I have to do, but unfortunately, I think that's what, back past the hill giants, isn't it? It totally is. So there's a way there from here? I guess fitting through this whole area here. Oh, that's such a bummer. Oh, I see the shortcut there, too. Damn. It would be too slow to get to 37 here in the Gnome Stronghold. Well, now we know. Seems like they're worth a decent amount of money compared to what I currently have access to. Grab some real quick. Maybe I can sell them to get money to teleport again later. When I inevitably fuck this up, right? Easy task in the Western Provinces section. Our quest sounds kind of fun, actually. Giant turtles, that's cool. Remove legs from Swamp Toad. Oh, poor Toad. Gnome Delicacy. Those all sell for quite a lot of Grand Exchange. I gotta make some of my money back. I mean, they're a lot to me because I'm a newbie player. I'm sure that they're nothing to a real player. What are you gonna do? I got enough agility, I can probably run out of here. I'm gonna have to run past the hill giants though. It's a little makes me a little nervous. Guess I could just teleport home, walk back to Verok. Oh, that sounds awful. I'll at least stop at this bank over here and deposit the stuff that I've got on me. NPCs not render if they're not on the same level as me, maybe? Yeah, appears to be the case. How's it all swamp toads, all king worms, toad legs? Get these Mark of Graces out of here. I guess we'll hold on to the coins since they don't weigh anything. So we came in originally. We just gotta go east. Getting better at not stopping to pull open the map constantly, which is nice. OK. 
careful where I walk to here. Pause and look at the map. Get myself in trouble, right? Try taking that bridge north, maybe, and then go northwest from there. We'll see. I saw on the wiki, like, agility shortcut. I'm like, oh man, I bet I have that. 37. No! Great sorrow. I'm gonna turn this off now in case I need the stamina here soon. Farmer Brumpty, huh? I guess technically if I was willing to go the long way, I could have avoided the hill giants the whole time, maybe? Interesting. Now, I guess this area here is an unknown. It might be actually super dangerous for me to traverse. I guess we're about to find out. That's a player. I had my embarrassing thinking an NPC was a player problem in the agility training. Goblins and guards still. Here's Tombstone. Alright, please tell me there aren't a million level 90 enemies climbing up this mountaintop. That's all I ask. I have to get there to accept the quest, and then I have to actually do the quest before I can do the agility course. Finally, ooh, a piece of candying it. I could just go back to Varrock and do my five levels there, but that's so fun. Is it down there? Right? Can I get down there from up here? Possibly not, so we'll see. Dive in the whirlpool. Ha, huh. okay, so this hill I can climb down. Interesting. Because it has to be a really smooth gradient, maybe? Interesting. All right, we made it. Looking for a quest here. What do you want? I want to come to this gate. You are bearing, you don't look like one. Got me there. I want to this gate. I am, in fact, a barbarian. You'd be able to drink like one. We barbarians like a good drink. The Alfred Grimhand Bar Crawl. First completed by Alfred Grimhand. Bar Crawl card. Take that card to each of the bars named on it. The bartenders will know what it means. We're kind of well known. Give you their strongest drink and sign your card. When you've done all that, we'll be happy to let you in. Okay. Read Bar Crawl. Oh, good lord. Okay. So I have to do the Gnome Stronghold anyway. Let me try to do everything that I need to do on this side of the map so I don't have to teleport again. And I guess I have to teleport over here to get through to back to the uh, Barbarian camp. Leaping Salmon. Just sit on the ground? What's that all about? Somebody's fishing just for fish skill ups, I guess. Oh, I don't think I want to rob them actually. I'm guessing they're leaving it on the ground for a reason there. That would be neat. Auto God Blessed. Think so? Forefathers are averse to traveling, so it's possible they tended to cause too much trouble in your so called civilized lands. Most return to their ancestral lands. You learn our more secret travel feats for yourself. Do you know that can supply knowledge in the ways of fire making, our special rod fishing tricks, and a selection of spear skills? Perception is credible. Eventually, teach them more advanced fire making techniques. When do you learn the more basic skills? Okay, let's do fishing rod. Heavier tackle, we fish in the lake nearby. Caught a few fish, I'm sure you'll be ready to talk more with me. Inspiration will fill your mind. I wonder if he's letting me talk to him because of my free space and no record of the tasks I've set you. Please take this book as a record of your progress. Uh, okay, so it's not a quest. Read barbarian skills. Fishing rods. Just says stuff on fishing rods. Harpoons.
Catch a fish that is usually harpooned without a harpoon, using your skill and strength. That sounds insanely dangerous. <laughs> Does indeed work with the shark. It's more a frenzied thrashing of the arm than a wriggle. I thought fishing was a safe way to pass the time. More answers. Fire making wisdom. Lighting fires without a tinderbox. Ooh. Strung bow. Quickly rotate pieces of wood against one another. As you rub, the wood becomes hot, eventually turning into flame. Benefit from guidance upon an oaken lock. Okay. So is this all still in the book? Harpoons and fire making. Fantastic. Heavy fishing rod. And I'll go see. It lets me. I don't want to get too distracted here. Gotta go on this bar crawl first and foremost, right? Not if we're competing for space on it. Alright, worry about it later. Got bigger fish to fry. Gotta go back around the lake though. It's wild what crazy stuff you just run into exploring around. We've already been this way before, so I'm going to mute as I go back to the Gnome Village. I wonder if this game, if aggro is affected by sight radius. If I can sneak behind a tree giant by waiting it to turn away from me. I don't know. Interesting to think about. Haven't been in this tree before. This is pretty cool. I got spirit tree that was outside too. Talk to King Narnod Shireen. Hmm. This must be this bar over here. Cocktail glasses. Around. Talk to the barman. I get you to drink. I'm trying to do Alfred Grimhand's bar crawl. Take it to Blurberry. Um, thanks. There's Blurberry. There it is. Doing Alfred Grimhand's bar crawl. Ten coins. Oh, good. It's a good thing I have some money on me. I often throw burn as you call it down. Signs my card. Delightful. Hey, completed. Okay. So there's actually one in Sears Village. Shit, I should have hit it while I was coming down from the mountain. Whoa, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to punch you, it was an accident. I'm leaving. Ignore me. Very sorry. It wasn't on purpose. Okay. So we can hit Sears Village on the way out of here. What else is on this list? Alright, let's search the map for all of these here. Okay, I can't have both of those open at the same time. I'm gonna type something in my notepad over here. Or I'll mute soon here. Okay, I have them all typed up here. Just gonna check the map and find them all relative to where I am right now. So we got Brimhaven, oops, Brimhaven, oh, I don't know if I can get there, guess I should solve that puzzle, okay, 
How do I get to Brimhaven? Brimhaven. Transportation. Ship ride will take the player to Ardone for 30 coins. Our ship has a dock in the Brimhaven Harbor. Several other locations. How do I get there, though? Maybe it's through that same boat. You can do it from Ardone, maybe? Okay. Let's look at the rest of them here. Yanil. Okay, so that's maybe accessible if I don't die between here and there. Okay. Uh, Musa Point. Also, looks like this island's called Karamja. Okay. Falador. Should be able to do Falador. It's not too bad. Port Serum. Probably get to Port Serum, okay, as well. Okay, uh, let's get moving. We're gonna do... Well, let's see, we're currently here, right? Presumably I can take a boat. Transportation, I can take a boat from here, and I've got a bar to do there, so... I think what we want to do is we want to grab... You know, it's a long walk. We want to grab the Sears Village thing, go back down into Ardone, get the thing there, and then take the boat to Karamja, and do what we can in Karamja. I guess I have to hit Yanil anyway, though, so I can't directly take the boat. I gotta go all the way down and then back up. Okay, that should be fine. I'll make it work anyway. Woof. This is a bit of a trek. All right, well, while I'm walking, I'll mute unless if something interesting comes up. You know, I'm gonna have to warp when I'm done with this anyway. I was thinking about going to Sears Village first, but now that I think about it, it might make more sense for me to go to, um, do that last. Like, when I'm all done, buy another Camelot to token, and then, uh, use it to warp and then hit Sears Village on my way back to the Barbarian Village since I have to loop all the way back up, so I think that's my plan right now. Fingers crossed that it doesn't fail for some horrific reason. I gotta say, right now I'm a little concerned at the possibility that one of these bars is going to be inaccessible to enemies that I will not be able to survive passing. So, we'll see. And there's my bar right there, at least, that's convenient. Two pints. This might not be the right bar, we'll check in a second. Who are you? Taskmaster for the Achievement Diary. I see you're here to go on an important mission. I'm a mighty hero. Part of the staff of Armadillo. It's in the deserted temple of Ekov near Hemster. At some point I should go around the game world and just try to accept as many quests as humanly possible. Just the reward. You are the mercenary type. It's a living. Sounds like a laugh. Mods are going to be killed with a weapon of ice. Many other dangers. Haha, <laughs> dangers. I'm up for it. Take this pendant. Okay. Here's the Grand Exchange. Okay. Alright, so uh, that was not the correct bar, at least I don't think it was. Does it say on the map the name of the bar? Let's just say pub. Flying Horse Inn. Is there another bar here somewhere? Ah, maybe that is the right one after all. I don't see any other pubs. Oh. Google it real quick. Let me check. Flying horse in. North of the castle. Because I don't actually know which one is the castle. There's the zoo. 
Well, that kind of looks like a castle right there. There's a picture. Oh, it does have a bar indicator in it. Oh, wait, no, I think this is the right one. Huh. Alright, let's try again. I need to find someone else to talk to. Oh, the bartender is stuck outside for some reason. I need to buy a drink. What do you serve? Beer. Doing the bar crawl. Eight coins. Can do. Grimace and drink it. Through your tears, you see the bartender. Signing your bar crawl card. All right. Oh, we were working on it. All right. It said there was a grand exchange here, right? And there's always a bank near Grand Exchange. I see it's probably in here somewhere. Oh, maybe not. It's just like a regular bazaar. Okay. Maybe you meant in Verak, then. Huh. Alright, we were gonna hit Sears Village last. So let's head down to... Wizards, or, uh, Yanil, let's just do south. Alright, meet me again until something interesting. Just thinking as we walk here whether this is the sort of thing that I should research in advance. I think it's more interesting when it's just blind and I go the wrong way and get turned around. Especially since I'll be fast forwarding the slower parts, so. I don't know, I don't mind Googling it once I have the quest to know that there's a quest. But I'm not gonna try to like find optimal XP per hour agility course, that sort of a thing, right? Here we go, bartender time. Let's do it. What can I get you? It's on the menu. Dragon Bitter and Greenman's Ale. Doing the bar crawl. 12 coins. Okay, should probably get some money here soon. Lights just lights of the kind as you blow the flame and drink it. Your vision blurs and you stagger slightly. Just about make out the bartender signing your crawl. Cool. So we got couple of them are off in, I think it's called Karamja, which is the island east of here. So I think my best bet is to probably check out Port Kazard. Looks like it has a place that might get me there. I should exit out the way I came though, it's leading through the east, that's west. Just occurred to me I might not have money for the boat fare. All right, well, maybe I can stop in one of these towns and get in my bank and try to sell some stuff. I think I've only ever sold in the Grand Exchange so far, never to uh, an NPC. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually works. Planks. I guess it gives only specific NPCs that I can uh, sell stuff to. I'm guessing I can't sell any item to anyone. That people only buy certain kinds of things. Hmm. I kind of assume that's a, because it's a transport that I could take it to Karamja. Perhaps that's not the case. Without this, I'm going in circles. Can I help you? I'd like to charter a ship. Oh cool, I need Wormhaven. Oh my god, 1600 coins? 1280 coins, okay. Well, let's see if I can scrounge up some money while I'm here. Looks like there's a bank here. I'd have to find a merchant that would actually buy the things that I have. 
can try to find a Grand Exchange. What does it actually look like? There's one in Verroc. This is that, ooh, a piece of candy gameplay everybody loves so well. Looks like a, like a ladder kind of an icon, maybe? Lean forward and look close and see if I can find one. I don't think there's one in that town. Hmm. Unique to big towns, maybe? It might actually be appropriate for me to Google it. Okay, let's see. I'd love to just be able to search for it, right? Grand Exchange. Grand Exchange, released February 15, whatever, it's fine. Oh, it nearly passed the poll, interesting. Northwest of Iraq, east of Edgeville. Oh, uh, maybe there's only the one. Yikes. Okay, well, I'll see what I can sell. Who can I talk to? If I get someone to buy these planks for me, that would be the bee's knees. Excuse me. What are you selling? Take a look. Inventory to sell. So if it says value, that means they pay nothing for it, right? Oh, but where can I see the value is a question. Salmon. Like of wood. Hmm. Oh, he buys other stuff. Let me check the bank over here. Hoping I'm not hosed. Let's see. Things I could sell. The wire really sells for 1.1k. So what I don't know is if that's to merchants. I need to kind of understand how that works better. Can I help you? Shop will buy for eight coins. Oh yeah, no, that's not happening. All right, I think I gotta teleport. It sucks. I'm gonna have to do it again at the very end of all this, but I think I gotta go back to Verroc. Which I guess I have to go there anyway. There's a bar there. I can try to like sell a ton of stuff and just get my gold as high as possible so I can do more things here. Bummer though, it's now I know. Uh, teleport time. Let's see, 30 minute cooldown. So I'll need to get off Karamja. Okie dokie. Let's think here. There are several places I need to go. What I need to get at Port Serum. Well, maybe I can take Port Serum to go where I want to go. It's one of the places on my list, isn't it? It is. Okay. I need to go to Port Serum anyway. I need to go to F uh, Falador anyway. I need to go to Verrock anyway. So why don't I go up to Verrock, hit these two hubs, get as much money as I can from the Grand Exchange with all the items that I have, and then uh, get moving. Seems like that's a plan. Let's 
fun watching me make horrible mistakes. <laughs> Alright. Fast forward to where we're going here. We've all seen Barak before. But I'm going the wrong way. I like, don't I have to cross a bridge? I remember seeing chickens and cows, but there's a different group of chickens and cows once you cross the bridge. Da -da -da. This is where I was murdering chickens before. Alright, next bar. Let's see. Dr. Harlow, Johnny the Beard, bartender. What can I do your four? Doing the bar crawl. Not another one of you guys. Do so much damage to my bar. 50 gold. I'm glad we're getting more money. I may have made it to Karamja and not had enough to get the other things. Your insides feel terrible. Oh, and I threw up. Fantastic. I can say with near certainty that if I had just done the, uh... The agility course here in Varrock for five more levels, it would have been way faster than doing this, but I feel like this is kind of cool. I'm getting to see a bunch of different new areas, getting to explore, get my chops down. So maybe having access to that uh, Barbarian Agility course gets me other interesting things. Who knows? We'll see. I'm sure it's on... Well, actually, I'm not even sure if it's on the quest list now that I think about it. Catcher, Restless Ghost... It does... Oh! Mini quests, okay. It does in fact count as a quest. I assume mini quests count as quests. It still count towards the all quests objective, so... We're getting there, slowly but surely. Okay, first things first. Let's see what I can sell these planks for. Not bad, especially if I can undercut. Okay, people are actually buying planks, that's exciting. Not as many as I thought they were, actually. Sell the other planks. Should've just sat there picking up planks for a minute. Make pretty good money on the, like, frog legs and stuff, though, right? Swamp Toad. 373. Okay. That doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot to me. Do the frog legs sell for more? That would be funny. They totally do. Wow. Alright. I wasted some there. That's okay. Frog legs are gonna pay for this trip. Frog legs must be used in crafting or something. Maybe a cooking recipe? So they're selling like hotcakes over here. Okay, well, I'm sure I'll find better money making methods in the future, but uh. It seems to be one that I can fall back on if all else fails. King worms don't really sell. Okay. Good to know. Planks I had to undercut a bit. Okay. I think this should be more than enough for me to buy all of these beers and buy book passage to Karamja. Maybe even book passage back off of Karamja without having to wait for this uh, cooldown, so we'll see. See if I can undercut the king worm a little bit more. Seems like it's kind of awkward to type in this game. Just enter a price. 
No, it's not that bad. Two ninety nine doesn't even sell. Okay, good to know. Banker, take all my shit. All right, let's go get this uh, last bar that's in town. It's off to the east. popularity of these uh, gambling like they gotta be making money to do it right some people have to be taking them up on it even though it's clearly unfair 54 plus wow talk about a house edge really need to get better at identifying players I thought I had a handle on it then there was that special agility course player. Now I'm permanently confused. Oh, presumably that's an agility. I'm curious now. Agility climb over shortcut. Then south of Varrock. Anil Grand Exchange agility shortcut. Oh, really? It's a Grand Exchange one. I guess it's not marked on the map. Maybe it's just the way you get in here. Disregard. This is the place, right? Oh no, it's west of here. There's like a cat in here, though. Weird. Alright, bartender. Let's do this. Can help me. I'm doing the bar crawl. Old suspicious. Cost you ten coins. Head is spinning. Thanks very much. <laughs> hey, the Kingworm sold. Very exciting. Brimhaven, Sears, Lowe's, Musa Point, Falador, Port Serum. Okay. So I think I'm going to try to go to Falador and Port Serum. And then I think Port Serum will let me take a boat to Karamja, which will let me get two more. Oh, you know, if I'm going to be smart. While I'm here, I guess I, if I was really going to be smart, I should have done it while I was at the Grand Exchange. I should go back to the Grand Exchange, buy my uh, teleport now to go to um, Camelot. That way, no matter what my cooldown is on my main ability. All right, it's really easy for me to get. I wish I could make the mini map always face the same direction. Uh, as I was saying, then I can go straight where I need to go once I'm finished with everything in Karamja instead of teleporting back home for no reason, right? It's all in service of making this thing regenerate faster. It's going to be totally worth it. Value. Oh, what are these values up here? So like penalties to my stats from getting drunk, maybe? Huh. That's funny. I see the Grand Exchange shortcut in the northwest corner there, which isn't really helpful for me right now, but good to know that it's there. I know that the way I've been doing this is like brutally inefficient, but I'm learning those efficiencies. Play this game enough, right? Decided to just grab a Falador teleport, save myself some walking. I got all this fancy money, right? Falador first, please. There may have been another teleport that would take me to Karamja, but I don't know where any of those locations are on the map, so... No dice for me. What can I get you? I'm doing the bar crawl. Hand of Death. 70 coins. I think that's the most expensive one so far. Drink the cocktail. Stumble around the room. Barmaid Kickles. Signs your card. Oh, I took some damage too. Wow. No kidding. That's looking pretty good. Looks like we can do this. Hopefully one of these towns is not like inaccessible for some ridiculous reason, right? Alright, so Port Serum is south of me. Down there, southeast. 
interesting stuff. I think I've just barely walked through this town before. Oh, am I getting combat? Oh, it must have been from when I randomly punched that person, the gnome, accidentally earlier. Totally did not notice that before. Go ahead and reset all. Are we pickpocketing any guards? That seems unwise. And then we're out of running. So the bar in Port Serum is southeast of me right now. Okay. I don't know which are that highway, man. Especially with my stats nuked from alcohol. Oh, they saw me for a second. That freaked me out. Oops, nope, I don't actually want to disconnect. There's the bar. He has beer. It was a really fun little quest. I really enjoy the quests in this game. It seem like they have really unique things. I guess we were talking about, like, lame... MMO quests, and you could say, like, okay, this is ultimately just go talk to people, right? But I feel like a lot of quests have been so streamlined now that it's, whenever it's go talk to people, it's never go talk to people all around the game world, right? And you don't really get stuff like this anymore. Bar crawl. Look a bit skinny for that. Eight coins. Steel. Vision blurs. Hiccup. Oh man. Alright, let me see if I can take a boat now. I think I need to go to Musa Point. What do I still have left? Or Brimhaven. 601. This is the Kingdom of Great Corns. I don't need to go there. Monk of Entrana. Your weapon and armor behind. Is Entrana on Karamja? So maybe I can do that then. Doesn't look like it. I'm just assuming that there's passage here. Maybe there's not. I thought I saw a boat earlier that offered to come here as one of the options. Captain Tobias. Yes, I do want to go on a trip to Karamja. 30 coins. Oh my god. It's so much cheaper than that other place. Here I am, like, needing to save a million dollars. Delightful. Doesn't take me exactly where I want to go, but that's fine. I don't really need it to. Because I could still be risky exploring this continent, because i got to get to Brimhaven. Mm hmm. Is this one of the pubs that I care about? Oh, it's Musa Point. That one's not actually in Karamja proper. Okay. Well, that's exciting. So this was not a waste then. Sambo. On the bar crawl. Eight bite liqueur. Banana taste. Seven coins, very good. That was loverly. Oh man, look at all that green! This is crazy. I'll start it with- I'm gonna sign in really quick and uh, do this new agility course that I just unlocked about that. I think I'm actually gonna wrap and go to bed once I unlock the course, as silly as that is. To charter a ship. Brimhaven, please. 200, that's fine. It's still cheaper than whatever they were charging me back in that corner. I wonder why it was so expensive. It's crazy. All right, this is our last complicated area. Uh, after we get this one, I think I can teleport to Camelot, stop at Sears Village, which I kind of need to pass through anyway to get to this uh, barbarian town and go to the barbarian town. And we should be solid. It's wonderful. I feel like I really ought to level... After I finish agility, I should level magic. Because getting free teleports would be 
extremely convenient for getting around. I'm not getting through that way. Guess not. Well, let me get over there. It looks like there's a thing on the cape that should let me through. No, oh, maybe not. Okay. Go around the long way. Not this long of a way, but whatever. That's fine game. I think that might be the bar up here. Can't be 100% sure. Where's the bartender? Those are just all pirates. There's a bartender. I wonder if pirates are something I can eventually pickpocket. Yo ho, me hearty, what would you like to drink? Here with the bar crawl. Super grog, 15 coins. Oh, this is how I prove I'm a barbarian by just drinking a lot. You can see two bartenders signing two bar crawl cards. Nice. Alright, Sears Village time, let's go. By the time I finish, I should be able to teleport back home. Although I'm probably just going to log off the Barbarian Village so I can keep doing the agility course that's there. Right, Sears Village is due west. I think this is actually better than my original... The, well, than the thing that I thought I made a mistake on. I was like, shoot, I should have stopped here on my way down the hill from the Barbarian Outpost. I think this is actually more efficient. Yeah, it's like directly on my path after I teleport here. How convenient. Yo, dog. You get some of that bar crawl. Liverbane Ale. 18 coins. The room seems to be swaying. Too drunk to be able to read the bar crawl card. <laughs> Fantastic. Alright, it is done though, so let's go turn it in. I just wanted the satisfaction of seeing all that green. Okay. Oh, this is actually quite a bit further from Sears Village than I somehow allowed myself to re falsely remember. That's okay, we can get there. Well, even better that I didn't come here from... Uh, The Barbarian Outpost earlier. Alright, we've been on this trick before, so I think we'll just fast forward. And moment of truth. What's this been like? Hour and a half since I was like, let's go do this uh, agility course. I will do the agility course once, then I don't need to go to bed. How's the bar crawl coming along? I think just about done them all, and I lost count. Give the card to the barbarian. You can come in now. I never learned to read, but you look like you've drunk plenty. <laughs> if you drink with your barbarian, I can show you how to smash your vials when you find them. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I want to smash my vials. It's all part of drinking like a barbarian. You will now smash your vials as you drink your potions. Oh, that's cool. It's like a optional uh that's so awesome i assume it's just like an optional animation whenever you drink so it's like thor right this is good i'll have another just make sure i grab some of those planks before i leave and get some money squeeze through the obstacle pipe do i not get yellow any oh here we go this one's pretty crazy it's like all the nodes are super close to each other, though. Maybe that's the advantage. So then the water bites you. Okay. Climb over the obstacle net. This is pretty cool. Across the balancing ledge. Oh, and there's spikes everywhere here. Yikes. Climb down the ladder. Go over these walls here. I 
We did a medium task in the Kandarin area, and that was one lap. That's pretty cool. Looks like there's some other places to explore here other than just the agility course. But uh, in the future, you will see a time skip where I just immediately start doing this course again. But I'm going to go sleep. So, thanks. That was fun. All right, I got some sleep. I dreamed of Barbarian Agility Course. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do it. Again, I'll be pausing to talk if anything interesting happens, or I think of anything to talk about. Let's go. Didn't realize I could fall in the pit. That's kind of cool. I wonder if that's a misclick thing. Interesting. I guess I don't have any food on me because I didn't expect it to be difficult enough that I might take more damage than I can regenerate. I'll keep an eye on that. If I take more, I can probably head down and find a bank somewhere. It's the first one I've done that's entirely doable with one camera angle without ever having to move or zoom the camera, which is kind of cool. Uh, makes me wonder how they calibrate the XP. I wonder if they base it on how many steps it takes you to finish, like, the rooftop parkour. Because this one is so tight, you can click on the nodes really fast. I'm wondering if it maybe just doesn't have marks of grace. I guess that might make sense. There's not a lot of room for you to go off course to pick up something, and I guess those are, like, a reward for paying attention. Uh, first time I've fallen off that. Hold on. Because I think so. I know I fell into the spikes down below, and I've fallen in the water. I think they calibrated the failure rate pretty fairly. So, I'm currently watching <clears throat> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Season 3. I talked before that I'm not super duper into anime. I'm also not super duper into stories that like completely pants everything and make shit up as they go along, but it's so like over the top and into it that it's actually kind of enjoyable. Uh, it seems like, I think I was mentioning this during the old school RuneScape live stream, but like I struggle I, with watching TV because it's usually something that I could be doing at the same time as watching TV. I have this like millennial need to multitask constantly. Somebody popped in stream and said they got to Agility 99 by watching like all of Breaking Bad, all of Game of Thrones, and like one other show. So it kind of gives me a sense of how long it takes to go to 99 Agility. We will not be doing that. I don't think that's going to be part of the goal of uh, this channel, at least. If our goal is let's beat every awesome game, I think it's fair to say that beating the game is doing all the quests. And I think... We're targeting like a 70, maybe 75 in most of the skills. Hey, agility level 36. Fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to watch some more JoJo. We'll fast forward some more as we work our way to 37. Didn't even notice how close we were. It's just an interesting thing that I was thinking about since I kind of missed the trigger for hitting level 36 earlier. Like, if you watch anyone that does YouTube playthroughs of RuneScape, it's kind of hard to, like, break your muscle memory and the groove that you get in while you're doing a repetitive grind to realize that you're about to level up. Stop and celebrate the level as it happens. Slow down for just a couple seconds and go back to it. Uh, it takes a lot of discipline. I guess maybe for other skills it's easier, especially if you're using OS Buddy, because you have this experience tracker, right, that shows you the number of actions you have left, which would be accurate if the number of actions was fixed, or if the amount of XP per action was fixed. But we know that it's not, because of the... You, you get more for doing the full lap, and you get different amounts of XP for each green circle you click on. Anyway... I'm sure I'll get better at it over time, beat myself up whenever I meet it, uh, miss it, but just needs practice. Man, falling in the water twice in a row. Bummer. Man, three times. That's getting brutal.
It's interesting. It looks like the lap counter in OS Buddy gets interrupted if you fall in the water too many times or something. We've definitely done more than six laps so far. Well, so we've got four left. Son of a bitch. Is this it? We're getting close. No. Okay. One left. I don't know where it counts the beginning of the lap. But let's see. It might be one of these here. There it is. 37 agility. Learning. Pay attention. Right. On to 38. This is exciting. 37 agility means we can now take the shortcut the corner of the gnome stronghold. Otherwise there's no way through that section of the map as we learned earlier. Son of a bitch. Hey, it's only the second time we've fallen in that pit. Oh, I think we just got a quest unlock, or a uh, random event. Pillory Guard, you're under arrest. I've come to lock you up. Okay, I'll come quietly. Oh god, where'd they teleport me to? Solve the puzzle to return to where you came from. Oh, okay. So it's another bot prevention thing, I guess? It's interesting. It's cool. Didn't mean to double click. Solve the locks. One down, two to go. Two down, one to go. You're set free. That's kind of cool. Oh, it gave me a thing. Uncut Sapphire. Presumably I got that for doing the random event. That's fun. Okay, so how many of those have we seen now? We saw a random guy pop up and I believe he gave me some gold. We did the pirate's booty where we had to solve the treasure chest. Ah! Now I've seen that one, so I think it's three that I've seen and done. Um, we saw somebody get like a Frog Prince event, but uh, it was actually somebody else. We didn't have access to start it. Oh, back to the grind. God damn it! Twice in a row. How dare you, game? This log, man. Not a friend. <laughs> God. It heard me saying it's not my friend. I love you, log. You're my best friend. A hey, first try. Oh my gosh. Fell in the spike pit twice in a row. Decent amount of damage taken, especially with falling in the water twice in a row. We'll see. I might need to start carrying at least a couple food items with me, just in case. And where's the nearest... Oh, there is a bank here. Okay. Worst case scenario, I can go grab some chickens if I get a little bit lower. I think two is the maximum damage I take from falling. But we'll see. Actually, super curious now whether anyone's like looked into RNG manipulation for... <laughs> <laughs> Old school RuneScape. I'm sure it's impossible. Oh, again? Wow, that's like almost three times in a row. It makes me wonder what the RNG seed is. And it feels like when it rains it pours, but it's probably confirmation bias, as it happens again. It's probably confirmation bias. You know, you don't count the times that it doesn't happen twice in a row, right? Falling in the pond. Really interested if we'll get down to sub like five hit points. Is it just true RNG and it's not affected by how long you've been here? It seems like it's a small enough chance to fail. Like maybe one in 20? Just fail again immediately. Yeah, I wonder if the 
RNG seed is like connected to time step or something. Oh, but it can't be. It's it, it's confirmation bias, right? People would know by now. Might get my wish of getting below five health. We'll see. Grab some chicken from the bank. All right, we're on the final lap. I think it's worth pointing that out now. Back at the 20 to 30 range, getting about a skill up every uh, six minutes or so. It's already getting quite a bit slower. Not as slow as I'm sure it gets toward the end when you get close to 99, but definitely starting to feel it. Uh, every level is precious. More precious than it was before. Here we go. 38 agility. There it is. Feels so good. Just two more and we get to go to the next place. Uh, I looked it up a second ago. I want to say it's Canifis rooftop course. Okay. So we'll definitely go there next. Oh, and then that's 40 to 48. If I don't know what Apatol is, I'll have to look into that once we get to 48. Falador's on there. We know we can get there, so that's exciting. Just in terms of number of laps required to level up, I think when we first got here it was like 12 laps. Now it's up to 21. It's a lot of laps compared to the uh, last rooftop course we were doing. But I'm guessing it just calibrates the XP based on how far you have to walk between points. I don't actually want to get below 5 health, but it's just kind of interesting to see whether it's possible. Well, we'll see what happens. Cutting it close. So it's interesting that I've had, like, I think I turned on run when I was at 30 agility, like, 15 minutes ago, and my regen rate is fast enough now, and there's short enough distance in between points that that's worked for almost the whole course, so... Probably have to shut it off soon, it's almost down to zero. Already seeing the benefits of agility. Cutting so close, will it happen? We're at five, very low on the HP regen tick at the moment. Oh shoot. Sometimes it directs me on the wrong side. I'm wondering if there's some optimization I can do there by the low wall. If I click it directly coming out, the character kind of paths awkwardly diagonally and then up back to the right and then down. I haven't really thought about like pathing optimization in terms of improving your XP per hour. I feel like the way this is set up, like making improvements on the order of seconds isn't that big of a deal, but I'll take a look at it when I get over there next time. Instead of clicking in a straight diagonal line, I might try to click here first, and then move down to the green dot. Rains it pours. I feel it's actually been more frequent that we fail twice in a row than if we just fail once, but I could still be wrong. So I've been thinking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and like the terms of like Axe Cop, if you've ever seen that. The webcam where it's like dictated by a four or five year old and then drawn by his uncle. It's kind of rude to the creator of JoJo who's definitely an adult, right? But a lot of stuff happens that sounds like a kid is just making it up in his backyard. Right down to like poop jokes. Hey, there it is. 39 agility. And we've got one more level up. 
to get to 40. It looks like it's 24 laps, which is about double what we started with from 35 to 36. So let's just buckle down and let's do it. Hey, it happened. We dropped below 5 health for a quick second. Interesting, I bet you can model the like HP loss over time with the failure rate on all of these objectives. We'll bail and go to the bank and get some food once I get down to 3 health. That's when I'm actually in danger, I think. Hey, 12 laps remaining out of 24 now. At least, I thought it was going to trigger that after I ran over that. I guess maybe laps count from the first green circle that it detects before you fall. Anyway, whoa oh, we're halfway there. Whoa oh, we're living on a prayer. Man, final lap. Let me say goodbye to the Barbarian Outpost. It's very exciting. This might be it. 40 agility? Oh, one more. Balance across the log. Don't fall after all that, right? 40 agility. Oh, value. Alright, well I've got the live split timer now, you can probably figure out how long tasks are taking, but that was about an hour and 21 minutes for 5 levels, versus previously about an hour for 10 levels, so you can already kind of feel the exponential curve. Alright, I think I'm going to take a break for a few minutes, and then we're going to go check out this new course, which is Canifis. I have to like search where that is and stuff, so bring down the recording and we'll be back in a few. Okay, I'm back. Let's do this. We're going to go to Canifis, is the name of the town. So I have to search that on the map and then try to find it. See if I can find my way there. Canifis. Oops. Canifis. Oh, shit. It's in Mauritania. I have not been there yet. All right. Um, How do I get to Mauritania? All these, like gates in the road. Can't go through the desert. Maybe there's someone that will let me through to get over there. Well, let's let's try to figure it out. I'll go ahead and warp in the meantime. I need to do that anyway. Goodbye, Barbarian Outpost. It's nice knowing you. Let's see if I can find my way to Mauritania. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just figure it out. Like, this is what we did with the Barbarian Outpost. So I'll try to just figure it out, and if uh, I can't put it together on my own, then I'll Google it. Once I officially get stuck. That should take a second in theory, so it should be okay. I was doing some research on agility is to see like exactly how much benefit I've gotten from skilling it up so far. And I guess compared to level one free to play agility, your energy or stamina region rate is doubled when you get to 50, which makes sense. And then tripled when you get to 90 from base. So we're getting pretty close to the doubled point. Gonna run for quite a long time. Read this side. Let's be. Dig site, Ferrock. 
I'll create champion skill. Okay. Let's just get going. Okay, there's a bear. That's something I should be worried about. I wonder if they have the gates there to just make it a members only area. Actually, I have no idea. Is there a way across the river? I actually didn't even notice that. Agility shortcut. Transportation. Hmm. Maybe that shortcut? I don't know what that area is called, though. Okay, let's look at skills and see if I can figure it out. Adardonis Temple. Elder Wall, Goblin Village, Horsier Cave. Stronghold. River jump. So being sown into Maritania near the nature grotto. That might be the one I'm looking at. If that is the nature grotto, it's not labeled, is it? In any case, I don't think I can get over there. Hmm. Maybe through that gate? I must be able to get there as a little character, right? Well, let's go find out. Already too far east. Sometimes we're going north, I guess. I'll try taking this road up here and see if that does it. It might. I guess we'll see. Pass to level six. Out of stamina. Should be careful with turning it back on in case there's an area that I have to run through coming up. Spooky music. Let me see if there's clearly a way out the back of this place. There might not be. Go through this building, maybe. Oh gosh, I think there's zombies down there. Ghouls level 42. Okay. Hmm. This might not be. Might not be great. Maybe there's a way for me to teleport there. Securely locked from the inside. I don't have thieving to get through there. Maybe this thing. Seems like a really bad idea. That seems like a really bad idea. What is that? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe if I had the appropriate run speed, if I let my stamina region a bit. I don't know if that actually exits through there or not. Let me check the map here. I got an exclamation point for a dungeon. That doesn't make it sound like it should have an independent exit, right? If I have an exit, I would assume it would be over that way. What's the name of this dungeon?
Maybe it's marked on the surface. Let's see. Adderdama's Temple. Oh, it's a bummer if I only knew what it was, right? Okay. Well, I don't think this thing aggroes. Maybe it gives you a second if you're near the door. Somebody's been trying to force this door open. It's still securely locked. Aha. Okay. Well, I think I've hit a dead end, so I'm going to go ahead and Google it. How to get to Canifus. Travel. Teleport to Canifus using the ancient magic spell Carol Teleport. Focus one of the portal chambers in their house to Canifus. You can also use a fairy ring, which will teleport to you west of Canifus. I don't know what any of those things are. Uh, OSRS, how to get to Mauritania. Members only area located in the east of Gilinor. Found creatures in the how to get to Canifus. There's a block church in a tunnel with a lock gate, and I'm stuck. Priest in peril. Okay, well, we did another quest for progression either. Now's the time. Uh, priest in peril. Figure out where I have to go to start it here. It might just be outside the castle. Start point. Speak to King Rold in the Verak Palace. Okay. I think I can find that. Let's go there. So, as far as like planning for the future, I think once I get to a reasonable agility level, my next major goal is going to be. Uh... Oh, it's... Okay, it wasn't that as much prayer as that. Next major goal is going to be combat. I kind of wanted to avoid spending too much early time on combat. I feel like that's a noob thing to do. Not knowing anything about noobs in old school RuneScape would be like, I'm playing an MMO, it's all about fighting. This game's not really all about fighting. But the reason I would level up combat early is that will help me to explore the world without worrying about aggroing things. So I might want to get my average combat level up quite a bit. Probably doesn't have to be as much as possible, but quite a bit. Haven't been in the castle before. Let's go find the king. The teleporty sound. <laughs> Maybe it's staircase climbing sound. This thing might be marked on the map. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Must be the guy in this room here. King Roll. What's up? Greetings, Your Majesty. Looking for a quest. A quest, you say? What an odd request to make of the king. We were the temple east here. It stands on the river Salve and guards the entrance to the lands of Mauritania. Today, since I last heard from Drezzle, the priest who lives there. What just happened to the conjurer? Want a payment for it? Okay. Let's go do it. Okay, is this the correct monk? Doesn't look like it. You can't go in the building, right? NPCs are marked on the map somehow. Check my quest text again here. Priest in peril. Temple of the East of Eric Palace. Been there and investigate what happened to him. The monk is the only guy that's out here. Door. All right, let me check the walkthrough right quick. I just looked at the start point. 
Temple is located east of Verak. Go to the wooden gate northeast of the east exit. Follow the path of the temple. Knock on the door. Right click and select to knock. Get used to right clicking. Oh shit. I wonder if I could have snuck on behind him. Probably not. What do you want? World sent me to check on Drizzle. It's Drizzle, isn't Drizzle that dude upstairs? World's a king of Eric, right? You deal with this, okay? My name is Drevel. Drizzle. I mean Drizzle. How can I help? King wanted me to make sure everything's okay with you. What would you do if everything wasn't okay with me? The dog. Can you do me a favor, adventurer? Sure. Ha ha ha, really? Thanks, buddy. See that mausoleum out there? There's a horrible big dog underneath it. Oh no. Kill it for me, it's really bugging you. I think that thing was pretty high level. Let's go see. It might be time that we uh, interrupt the agility grind. Better in an instant area. Items left or drop inside cannot be retrieved. Oh, it didn't give me that warning last time. Level 30. Yeah, I am combat level 9. I don't think that's possible. So, the agility grind is temporarily paused. I'm pretty sure this is my only way to get in there. The other shenanigans that were listed for accessing Mauritania are too shenanigan-y for me to access. So, it's time to do some combat leveling, which was the next thing that I wanted to do anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, let's not punch the bat randomly. Seems like a bad idea. So, I asked this on stream, but I'm still not super clear on it. It seems like I can just as easily level combat by fighting the chickens back uh, near the starting town as with any other enemy in the game, and that the main reason to fight different enemies is for different drops. Um, the reason I'd stick to the chickens is that I can level cooking from fighting them, and I can level fletching from fighting them. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just stick to the chickens for a minute, but after I get to level 10, I might Google uh, some recommended combat training paths, just because I don't know enough about it and I didn't get far enough to ask any questions about when it's appropriate to, to move on there, right? So we'll go ahead and reset, reset XP per hour. We'll do some combat stuff here soon. I don't think your magic stats included in your combat rating. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm gonna pop in and get my stuff out of the bank, so I'll get some gear back. Then we'll get rolling. Oh hey, random event. Quick Turkentine! Donating the victims of my crimes. You gave me some gold. Okay. So I guess I didn't miss the event last time. It just has a single line of dialogue. I was so confused when that happened. Like, was I too slow? Right, we're going to grab this and I'm going to mute until I get back to the chickens. May as well fight this mugger. We want... Accuracy as much as possible first, so I'm going to focus on that. I want to make sure that I'm always hitting, and then I can try to get some strength and do some more damage. Hey, hit points 13. Very nice. I didn't realize I was so close to hit points level up. Gotta get some wood. I think I can actually cook at the farmer's house. Maybe I didn't need this tinderbox. Oh, but no, I need wood in order to make arrow shafts so I can level up fletching with the feathers that drop. Okay. So I can also just stack the feathers indefinitely and do that later. So I don't have to do them all at the same time. Main problem is I need to get rid of the chicken meat for my inventory, right? Need fletching 15 to make arrow shafts from oak logs. Oh! I didn't realize that it basically just gives you more shafts per log. Okay. That's cool. 
totally going the wrong way. Why is there a bear? I don't remember there being a bear on the way here. It's cool. Get there. Seek superstar scimitars. Well, actually. White mithril adamant. Oh, it's a shop. It's He's not the shopkeeper. He's trying to sell flyers to the shopkeeper. That's funny. I failed because I didn't do the uh, little fence jumping shortcut. Foolish. It's okay. I'm used to doing it from south to north, but not north to south. I'll try to remember for next time. Alright, let's murder some chickens. I apparently suck really bad at murdering chickens. I don't know why. There it goes. Did not mean to attack the farmer, but I guess we'll see how it goes. He's a comparable level to me, so... Attack level 7. Very nice. So I guess maybe I can imagine now an advantage to fighting a enemy might be that they have more hit points. So you can just sit and kind of pseudo AFK the same enemy for longer. Versus, um... Killing the chickens, it gets me a bunch more loot that I can use. Because I can kill them quickly. I can get all the feathers for fletching. But if I can find something that I can reliably hit that has more hit points than the chicken, that might actually be better. Victory over the farmer. Tomato seeds. Bones. Alright, let's get back to chicken murder here. Don't know what the seeds are all about. We'll see, I might switch to cows at some point. Because uh, I think that it's just as easy for me to hit them, but they have significantly more health. The main advantage of chickens is that I can stay inventory neutral. I don't have to like run and leave at any point to turn stuff in or bank it. I don't think that the hides from the cows stack. But we might give them a try just to see. Hey, attack level 8. Interesting, it looks like burying bones doesn't consume a time step, so I can try to do it while swinging. I think looting might consume a time step, though, so I can't do that as efficiently. Cooking 14. Cider and worm crunchies. Okay, that's cool. I was about to say cooking 15, but we burned the last chicken and are just short of it. Just kind of a bummer. Alright, let me try this shift click thing. Let's go ahead and do some fletching too. Back to punching stuff. I think my plan is to try to take uh, attack to 10 and take everything to 10 and take everything to 15 and so on. Seems like it's worth evenly leveling them. I've got a pizza coming from Domino's in like 15, 20 minutes or so, so I'll probably pause the timer and split the VOD once that happens and just pick up where we left off. I guess getting health upgrades doing this is helpful too as far as like progressing through the world because I can tolerate getting hit more times when I'm trying to run to go to agility courses. We'll see. It's interesting, I got 2 HP XP that time instead of one. I wonder what causes that. That's interesting. I wonder if you can only bury the bones for free in combat if you like animation cancel while something else is happening. I can't really tell whether her stopping to dig. Hey, attack level nine. Hooray. I can't tell whether her stopping to dig is, uh, if I see that animation, if that slows her from punching the next time. I guess we'll try to figure it out. Huh. Join us for today's JMod Q&A plus a special new quiz. That's interesting. I guess if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to comment on what the deal is with the Q&As and the quizzes, I'd be interested to know. Cooking 15. 
Sufi fish and prail bats. Oh, and trout. Cool. Cooking 16. It's interesting that when you level up cooking, it tells you what new things you can make, but not everything else that you level up tells you what new things you unlock by having gotten a level up. Members can now spit roast rabbit meat, cook jungle spiders, and make chocolate chip crunchies. Wonderful. Oh man, Domino's just updated. They're on their way. So... I will stop the clock and go grab it to hear the doorbell. We're about to get level 10 attack, and then I can immediately get level 13 prayer. Level 10 attack. And... Level 13 prayer. Wonderful. Okay, time to switch from attack to strength. Get them all to 10, get them all to 15, and so on. Really like occasionally hitting for two while training strength. I assume it's because these things are weak against aggressive, or aggressive tends to do a little bit more damage since it's less accurate. I think it gives me more XP, too. I think... I wonder if, if I do more damage from having a higher strength, if that'll make my uh, attacks fill up faster once I go back to training attack. Maybe. Guess we'll see. Strength 6. Cooking 17. I wonder at what point chicken will no longer be effective. Now cook lean snail. Pizza's here, bear back. Alright, my voice might sound a little robotic. I'm uh, cooking my pizza in the air fryer because I'm a madman. I take freshly delivered pizza in the air fryer because it tastes better. Anyway, the air fryer is super loud, so I've edited out the sound of it in the background. Um, I figure I'm not talking too much while I'm grinding, and it's only for like 10 minutes. I'll go ahead and mute myself in my ear robot voice, though, whenever I say something like, Strength level 7. Very exciting. Oh, and hit points, 14. Nice. Two. Strength level 8. Whoops, we got another farmer battle going on. Let's see if it's better now that my uh, attack and strength are so much higher. Yeah, it was way, f way faster. Probably having it set too aggressive was a big part of why it was better, but... Strength level 9. My pizza's ready. I'm gonna go grab it real quick. Robot voice should be gone. Just wanted to see if I could cook this egg. You can't cook that. Okay. The answer is no. Probably should have started that further from the level up, but uh, cooking 18. We're back. Next thing I'm wondering is if it's possible to do more damage than an enemy has hit points. These chickens only have three hit points. So I wonder if it makes sense to stop fighting an enemy that you're overcapping damage on because you won't get as much XP. Would make sense if that's the way it works. Strength level 10. I'm less excited about it, but I think it's time to do defense. Prayer 14. Cooking level 19. Dwarven Stout. Defense level 6.
It's interesting. It looks like I do, in fact, get extra XP when I do two damage, which I think I'm only able to do two damage in the defensive stance because of my points and strength. So it must be some fun math trying to figure out what the optimal order to level attack, defense, and strength is. I mean, I assume defense you want to do last because it doesn't have any effect on how often you hit and how much damage you hit for. But I guess it could be six of one on whether you do attack first or strength first. Defense level seven. Dude's gonna leave bones behind, I'm not gonna say no. It's still slow prayer XP, but it's prayer XP. Level 20 cooking. What a treat. Meat pies and pike. Nettle tea and short green guys. Defense level 8. Hey, hit points 15. Nice. There it is, cooking 21. Defense 9. Prayer 15, burying them bone. Hey, defense level 10. All right, so the three melee abilities are all 10 now. I think I'll go ahead and try to get attacked to 15. Maybe we'll do 15. I think I'm gonna try to try it go into a different place once I'm able to do three damage per hit. That's when I'm gonna get a little bit worried. Cooking 22. Attack level 11. There it is, cooking 23. There's attack level 12, three more to go. There's prayer 16. Them bones, them bones. And right away, attack 13, two more. Yeah, back to back, hit point 16. Hey, and there's cooking 24. So I apparently hit 14 attack a little bit ago. I don't know if I didn't hear the fanfare or what happened. Uh, but we're 14 attack! One more to go. Then we can do strength. That's an exciting level. 25 cooking. Stews and salmon and fruit buttons.
Hey, it's another random event. Oh, Rick Trickentine. Okay. One of the less interesting ones that just gives you money. Hey, it's attack 15. Awesome. All right, let's do strength. I think strength is going to be the stat that we end up moving on from chickens eventually. Like Once I'm able to do three or more damage, probably makes doesn't make sense to fight these ones anymore. We'll see. I might look that up or I might ask a RuneScape player in my Discord later. I feel like it's time for me to do some research soon. Oh, interesting. I didn't even see it. Apparently I had a kebab from Rick Turpentine instead of money. Interesting. Pretty cool. I've got this other person fighting chickens that's not looting bones, so I'm getting a decent number of prayer levels. Just hit 17. Hey, cooking 26. I don't think I really intended to come in level cooking at all, but I'm just getting it incidentally while I get rid of my chickens. Hey, it's strength 11. Nice. Hey, strength twelve. Three more. I might look at the guide really soon. Uh, Interested to see what I get for different levels of attack, strength, and defense. So I'll uh, turn off the fast forward when I do that. Cooking 27. Not at all what we're going for, but hey, we'll take it. I think I'll go ahead after this round of cooking and look at the uh, strength, defense, and attack skill guides to see what's going on. Okay, let's look at these skill guides. Uh, attack, weapons, let's see. Black and members white. I don't get anything new from an attack perspective until 20. Armor, not nah, it's gonna be a thing. Salamanders, no idea what that means, but okay, doesn't do anything till thirty. Strength guide. Oh, axes are separate weapons. Interesting. So fifteen, we get the adamant halberd. So long as I also have thirty attack, which I will not have. But I guess technically I can do... I can't do the Mithril Halberd, I can do a White Halberd. Armor's not going to matter for a long time. Shortcuts aren't going to matter. That's kind of cool that there are strength-based shortcuts, though. Actually, there's, not, there's quite a few strength-based shortcuts that combine with agility, I see. And then Barbarian, once I get to 15, I can do Leaping Trout. But I need to have 48 fishing, which isn't going to happen for a long time. It might be nice to do, I guess, after I do attack. This will help me plan out what I want to do going forward. Once I get uh, my combat level high enough and finish off agility, it might be fun to do fishing next to do leaping trout and leaping salmon. Just for shits and giggles. Alright, defense. Pretty much just armor. So I guess I can already wear black and white armor. One with a Slayer Helm, Zeresian Armor once I get my magic up, which isn't going to take a long time. Get it to 20, I can do Mithril. So it seems like 20 is a really good stopping point for 
attack, strength, and defense. And if I look at my current combat stats, I'm at 17.85. Uh, not all of them at 15. So I wonder if I take them all to 20, that might be enough for me to fight that dog so I can go to Mauritania so I can train agility further. Fortunately, I don't feel too bad about leveling uh, attack right now because it doesn't really benefit from agility. Like I barely am having to move at all in between chickens. So this is probably the best possible skill to interrupt my path to skilling agility because it doesn't actually require agility to be successful. Um, I know Chaos Factor had warned me that the agility course that's in the wilderness is easier the lower the level you are, but I don't think I could really manage being much lower than whatever level I need to kill this dog. All right, well, back to business. I don't know that I noticed this earlier, but I think I am doing three damage now with strength. Um, so something I don't know about, I've been trying to puzzle out so far, is that if I do one damage to an enemy with the first swing, is it now impossible for me to do three damage to? I, I guess chickens specifically, they only have three hit points. It's part of my earlier question about whether um, you can do more damage than an enemy has remaining hit points. I think the answer is no. So it may be that chickens have been slightly inefficient ever since I was able to do two damage, because once I hit them 1-1, one, one, I could no longer do two after that. But I guess enemies always get close to depleting their health, so it'll only really be an issue when I'm consistently doing two or three damage per hit, but I'm missing out on three damage hits for three damage worth of XP. So we'll think about moving eventually. Cows might be a good place to go. I think we're pretty good on... Feathers for fletching, I've got 2,000, so I could try skilling up crafting and just uh, walking the uh, walking the hides back to the bank, depositing them, making trips back and forth from the cows. I don't think that would be the end of the world. Oh, here comes another farmer battle. I'm actually really curious... Just thinking about this, whether having a stronger weapon uh, actually makes me gain more XP if it makes me do more damage. I guess I don't have a ton of better weapon options right now, but I will once I get everything to 20. So I think once I get my combat skills to 20, strength 14, once I get my combat skills to 20, I should consider upgrading my whole gear set. Oh, hey, and there's prayer 18. So we've gotten like eight levels of prayer from Bones and ten from that one quest we did in the stream session. There's 28 cooking, second highest skill after agility, basically not on purpose. Hey, strength 15 on an accidental farmer or two. Time to switch to defense. And gardening boots. Man, the really big uh, drop tables for stuff in this game are really interesting to me. Leather boots, gardening boots. These are just like a appearance thing? I don't know that I want those specifically. Maybe they show up in a quest or something. Let's see if I can... Oh no, they don't sell on the Grand Exchange at all. Okay, never mind. Well, it'll be nice to move on from chickens just to get to fun drop tables. Maybe I'll research it before the next session. I'm lightly making a plan of how I'm going to cut up videos. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, my YouTube channel is mostly long VODs from full playthroughs of games, so I don't think it's super appropriate for me to load a bunch of like 10 minute fast forwarded clips. Uh, but what I might be able to do is every 8 hours of actual in-game play, stitch that together and load it. That would probably add up to maybe an hour, hour and a half long video, depending on how much I fast forward. So, uh, given that we've got Six more minutes until I get to my 16th hour after playing it for eight hours on stream. That'll be a good stopping point, and I'll take some time to try to 
edit together before we play next time. But I still think the ongoing plan... The main goal is get agility to, like, 70. <laughs> but if we reach any roadblocks on the way, we take a break from agility to deal with those roadblocks and then go back to skilling up agility. After that, I think we do maybe a little bit more attack just so that we aren't so easily aggroed around the world map. And then I'm thinking about fishing after that, but I have to think a little bit harder. We might actually do magic. I would like to try to prioritize skills based on how useful they'll be in making everything else faster. So getting magic up and getting some free teleports might be a big boon in that department. Hey, Defense 11, form. Oh, that was the dream right there. Got three, three damage chicken hits in a row. Wonder if it actually would get faster to just stay here and one-shot everything. I mean, I guess I still have to loot stuff, but it would be good for prayer grinding. Well, there's probably bones that are way more efficient for prayer grinding than chicken bones, but still. Probably do cooking at least to 30, not a little bit higher. There's got to be things that are faster for cooking than chicken. But I guess the big advantage is I can get a ton of it. I can get it all right here. Uh, and I'm, it's basically just free XP. If I tried to focus cooking later, I might try to find a more efficient recipe, but... At some point we'll have to do fletching. I've got so many feathers. Do get a ton of shafts. That'll be a fun one to plan for later. Alright, well I cooked these chickens. I'm going to look at some of the other stats in OS Buddy. I can see my drop rate of stuff, right? Oh, this is like a drop history. So I've killed 469 chickens today. Getting 2,935 feathers. 467 chicken meat. 467 bones. Yes, these are... Oh, this might be my full history of kills? Maybe it isn't today. That's kind of cool that it records all of the kills you've ever gotten. It summarizes the amount of money you got from all of them, too. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, maybe not to Jay today, but in the process of getting to my current combat stats, I've killed that many chickens and gotten that many feathers. Alright, so we're at time. Uh, if I'm going to be doing eight hour blocks ish for edited YouTube videos. So I'm going to head back to Starting Town, drop stuff off, try to set up for whatever we're doing next session. See, so we ended up getting to combat level 19. I'd like to get. Uh, there we go. I'd very much like to get attack, strength, and defense to 20, and then I think I might be strong enough to be able to handle that dog. I guess I should probably be ranged as well. Maybe if I finish making all of these uh, arrows, I could do that. Shouldn't be too hard to try to set up. I think the biggest problem will be smithing. I don't know if I want to go on a big smithing sidetrack to get to agility. I feel like if I get attack... Uh, strength and defense up. That should be more than enough. I kind of want to do more pickpocketing. It sounds like that's a progression upgrade too. A pretty big one and then it lets you pick locks. Thievery, I should say, technically. Oh, dang it. This game's pathing is questionable sometimes. Deposit all, cook chicken, deposit these leather boots, kebab, seeds, all feathers, 2860 feathers, cool. Copper ore, headless arrows, and the oak logs, I'm gonna mess around with those later. I'm probably not gonna need the tinderbox, or the knife, or the hatchet with the way I'm doing stuff out there. I'd rather have an empty inventory. 
I guess I was planning on breaking up the chicken farming by getting some arrows, but I think it's too much work. I may as well just deposit all of my feathers and do that all at once. Okay, I think that's probably going to be it for this video series, uh, or this episode of the video. So you've seen me start at agility 21, get to agility 40, finish the uh, bar crawl quest, which we needed to get from 35 to 40, and done a little bit of attack grinding. I think the next video series, I'm going to continue to just focus on the goal of getting agility up. So we'll finish getting attack strength and defense to 20. And then once that's done, finish the quest to get to Mauritania and keep training agility from there. Thanks for watching. Bye.